and this would also be the last World Championships before a certain Australian Cuba would come along to shake up how everything worked in cubing forever. 2010 marked something of a turning point in competitive cubing. At the end of January, the sub-10 average barrier would be smashed by Felix Semdex, and it wouldn't be too long before others followed suit. The Dayan company introduced the Guhong, the first cube to majorly depart from the original Rubik's design, and would prove to be one of the most influential cubes in history. Lubix, one of the first silicon lubes specifically designed for cubes, started shipping to rave reviews. It was shaping up to be an incredible decade. Soon, people were beginning to wonder and speculate when and where the next World Championships would take place. Some were just taking their own country or general region and suggesting those, others were taking the previous locations into account, and were either suggesting those, or explicitly rejecting them. Even when Ron van Broekum explained how places were decided, people were still suggesting particular locations. Of course, occasionally the completely ridiculous and unfounded suggestions were made, like Pluto or Australia, but generally they were serious. Eventually, the official dates and location were released, after having been leaked a couple days previously. From the 14th to the 16th of October, the World Rubik's Cube Championship 2011 will be held at the Bayoke Sky Hotel in Bangkok, Thailand, the same location as the Asian Championship the previous year. As always, there was much celebration. With a total prize pool of over 24,000 euros, the largest yet, registration filled up very quickly. In the end, 332 competitors signed up out of potentially 400, although only 292 made it to the competition. This would also be the last World Championship with Magic and Master Magic as official events. They were removed at the end of 2012 and did not make an appearance at Worlds 2013. Around the time of the competition, Thailand was experiencing their worst floods in 50 years. Many were concerned that it would affect the competition and possibly cancel it, but it did go ahead. Pink shirts were the official uniform, as the King of Thailand was seriously ill at the time, and it was considered to be his personal colour of good luck. Much like previous championships, there was a mosaic building competition, where competitors had one hour to build the best cube mosaic they could. There was Doraemon, an angry bird, Steve Jobs, and the Hogwarts Crest, among others. For the most part, this was a fairly average world championship. As always, there were several world records, including a flawless 19 cube multi-blind. Yes, this isn't so impressive now, but just play along. This is before Moscow revolutionised what multi-blind could be. Just go with it! The big surprise was on Saturday morning, when Felix Zemdegs managed to pull off the first official sub-minute 5x5 single in history, with a time of 59.27 seconds. However, this would be just a taste of what was to come. At quarter past five on the evening of Sunday, the 16th of October, 2011, the 5x5 final began. What transpired would soon be widely considered the most intense moment of any competition in history, and it stands as an incredible show of force to this day. Felix went up on stage, and on his first solve managed to get the fourth sub-minute time ever, with a 59.59. Immediately following that was yet another world record, a 58.41 single. After a plus two solve that could have been yet another sub-minute time, and a 105.4 single, he had already secured the world record average. The worst his average could be was 102.27, nearly two seconds below the world record he had already broken that morning. Soon afterwards, Yu Nakajima got a 58.53 Asian record single on his fourth solve. The number of sub-minute times by Felix alone would already have put this world into the history books, and now Yu had achieved an Asian record single by over three seconds. Then Dan Cohen got a 57.44 world record single. There doesn't appear to be any video of this, but from what I understand it was an incredible moment when it happened. If Felix broke this record, he would have managed not only three 5x5 single world records in the same competition, two of those being in the same round, but he would have achieved the first official sub-minute average just one day after the first official sub-minute single ever. Could this even be done? <laughs> Thank you.
in an amazing moment, the one minute barrier on 5x5 had been completely demolished. Three people could now say they could solve a 5x5 in under a minute, one of them semi-consistently. Over the next few months, more and more people started getting sub-minute times, and nowadays having a sub-minute average is no guarantee that you'll even be in the top 100, but it all started here. As everyone calmed down from that round, the 3x3 final started. It was almost universally expected that Felix would win. After all, he had been absolutely smashing nearly every other end by end event, and was so far ahead of anyone else. It would take an absolute miracle for him to not win. I mean, how could that even- yeah! <laughs> Nerves can get to even the best of us. Mikhail Pleskovich ended with an 8.65 average, nearly a second faster than second place, which was taken by Roe Hessler. Felix settled for a third place with a 9.58 average. World champion status would sadly have to wait for another time, assuming no one else came along in the meantime, of course. It can be easy to look back at the times of the 2011 World Championship and consider it just a simple evolution of times, but it was a true milestone. The times seen in this competition were unprecedented in cubing, breaking records that some people considered the human limit just a few years previously. It heralded the start of the greatest decade in cubing history, and the next World Championship would be a beautiful refinement of the talent shown that year. Hi! This video is sponsored by dailypuzzles.com.au Yeah, I know, it's a sponsored bit. Just calm down, okay? This video never would have been released without their help. Daily Puzzles is not, as you may have thought, a subscription box containing a puzzle a day. It should be, but it isn't. I'm gonna to have to get them to change their name. Daily Puzzles is a place where you can get a lot of puzzles really cheaply with excellent customer service. And plus, if you go to their website, buy something and use the code TCHDAILY, you can get 9% off anything in their store. I really don't know why 9%, it seems completely arbitrary, but whatever. Anyway, just go to dailypuzzles.com.au, use that code, 9% off anything. Thank you to Daily Puzzles for sponsoring this video. I don't know when the next one will come out, but yay, it's out, finally, I'm back. Oh, God.